Hello, um, Nicholas Barry uh, asked me if I could do a video tour of my setup and so this is the video of me showing you my collection um, this is also the room that I <laughs> sleep in <laughs> but uh, I'm actually moving hopefully in a month or so uh, and into a much bigger place but yeah uh, it's gonna be an interesting thing to rehab or to uh, to uh, pack these guys up, but a lot of them I shouldn't have to rehouse them. Uh, I think they can just be put up in, in boxes and they should be sturdy enough. But uh, so uh, I will uh, show you my collection and uh, I'll try to use the Latin names. But I'm for some of them I'm just going to use common names because I'm will butcher the Latin. But at the end of the at the end of the, uh, at the description I'll put a um, a uh, a list of uh, all the numbers and stuff if I have and then. Hopefully that'll be helpful. So, we'll start over here. This is a recently acquired <coughs> Haplopelma albo striatum female. Um, the owner uh, re uh, uh, realized that uh, Haplopelmas were not his uh, his kind of spiders he wants. So he asked me if I uh, would be interested in it, and he sold it to me dirt cheap and I couldn't refuse the amount of money he was asking for so I immediately said yes I take it and uh, so here she is um, normally these guys go for like you know 70 bucks but uh, he was offering me for way way less and so I actually ran out of uh, tanks but I had this uh, bucket and the substrate is about a foot deep and uh, hopefully she'll burrow into it um, I don't have a pre-made burrow for her because I think I think she'll burrow by herself but if she doesn't in a few days then I'll try a pre-made burrow but there she is looking all gorgeous I really do love these are one of my favorite hepapenal species over here I have some uh, hepapenal uh, lividums um, they're a lot smaller and they probably don't need this big size of thing, but they'll grow into it. Um, they were having some mold issues, so I had to rehouse them, and uh, I decided to uh, put them in these things. And as you can see, his burrow's all webbed up. He wants to be left alone, so I'll just put that back up there. But uh, so here's a couple of my Haplopelma lividums. Uh, this is my. Uh, roach colony the bottom one there's no there's nothing in there but um I have a humidity issue with there I don't mist or anything in this tank but I think just all the food you know when I feed them and stuff it just accumulates you know humidity so I'll probably have to open up the screens in there so that's why it looks all wet and stuff but um actually I used to use uh fruit and vegetables for them but I didn't like how I always had to to take them out with that and within a day or two because of the mold and stuff and a buddy of mine who breeds a lot of geckos um introduced me to this uh, bug burger stuff and I'll give you a link of it and I, I love the stuff it's easy to make and uh, it doesn't mold and the roaches seem to just go crazy eating it all up and very rarely have I ever seen it uh, uh, not be completely devoured uh, in less than a day so uh, I like I said I'll put a link on on the description if anybody's interested if they're thinking about starting a roach colony <sighs> over here these are my uh, blue-footed baboons. If you saw my uh, recent feeding video, I just acquired these. These guys have been on my wish list for a while. And I finally broke down and got a couple. Um, they're obviously completely submerged, so there's no point in opening up the lids. But these are these guys. These are my Histiocratus species. Uh, the guy who sold them to me was not sure of the species. He thinks there might be Crassipes. But he didn't really know, so as of right now, they're they're unidentified. But it's not like they're a new species or anything. They're just no. He just doesn't know what they what they what they were. So he just knew they were histocratics. So you know, these are all of them. And then if you notice, I have this. And what this means, and you might see this in other ones, is this is how many times it's molted in this enclosure. Um, and then I put over there, like um, right here. This means that. Uh, it, it had blocked its burrow and then molted. I know it's weird, you know, there's just how I 
how I you know gauge it and stuff like that. Um, but those are all his histiocratus species. Um, over here, these are some trap doors. Uh, these are black, and then these they might be red, but it's kind of a weird story. Um, they were supposed to be African blacks when I bought them, but the company I got them, which is Reptile City, which I didn't see the reviews before I bought them, and after that I realized what a terrible mistake I did, but uh, anyways, it's kind of an interesting story because I had bought them as African blacks, they didn't give me any response of when they were coming or whatnot, and after a couple of weeks I was like, you know what? just you know I want my money back they said fine and then a week later I get this uh, thing on my door saying that I missed a package and I realized that, it, that the reptile city had sent me the trapdoors uh, and so uh, they were in and I feel bad for them but they're fine now I feel uh, they were in um, the the post office for the weekend and when I got them on Monday uh, yeah they weren't happy but uh, anyways but these guys are definitely not blacks, and they might be African reds, but I don't know for sure. Um, as of right now, they might still be young because they're pretty small. But so those are theirs. <clears throat> this is my female Theraphosa sturmi, showing off for the camera. She's in a, uh, I believe this is this should be like a 30 gallon tank. Uh, I just have a spare one around, and since you know it's a big spider. You know, she gets the, the big enclosure. These are Chiliobrachis uh, diocolysis, I think, or smoky black tarantulas. <clears throat> this is a OBT that I was given to me as a freebie. Um, nope, he just kind of disappeared really quick. Uh, this is a freebie that I got when I got the blue-footed baboons. This is a King Baboon Sling, as you can see, he already burrowed uh, on under the bottom. You can see there's the thing, and you just see if I can. I don't know where he is. He should be. He's well, he's obviously. You know, yeah, he's. Can't really see him, but he's right back there. Uh, this is a Lampropelma nigerium. Uh, it's actually my only arboreal species. Um, I have nothing against arboreals, and you know, I, my my collection I usually keep with is usually just old world and old world burrowers, just because I I find them a lot easier to take care of than a lot of uh, a lot of uh, arboreal species and other in other species. And um, this was given to me as a freebie, so this is actually my only arboreal species I own. I mean, I, I like I said, I like them, and I'll probably get more, you know, down the road, but, you know, like I said, I just, I find from all the, you know, all the stuff I see on forums and stuff that arboreals can tend to be a lot more difficult to take care of, you know, they, they can be really delicate, and uh, so that's why I kind of usually stay away from them, but he's doing so fine, so, so far so good. Um, I cut up a pedipalp and kind of used it as kind of like you know up there but since they're slings they usually burrow more often but this one kind of made a webbing thing right back here <clears throat> alright so these are some Australian species uh, these are you can just see one running across here these are some um, I think it's pronounced four foli foli jays uh, black presleys they're supposed to be a Australian Queensland species um, that I got in a trade. Um, they're supposed to also be extremely slow growers. Uh, where did you? Oh, and you shot across there. Uh, this is a Hapopelma long ipe, and this is a another long ipe. This is a Hapopelma schmitty. Uh, this is another long eye. This is a Chiliobrachis uh, Vietnam blue species. Um, oh, there he is. Let's see if we can get a good shot. 
you can see he's kind of see his legs and he's walking back out <clears throat> these are king baboons uh, these six right here so I have a total of seven king baboons the one up the one up there and then these six uh, you know a lot of times it's hard to get these guys to feed on videos because they're so so flighty um, is he up oh yep I'll just yep see there he is <laughs> Um, over here uh, are my uh, salmon pink bird eaters slings. You know, though, obviously people say they grow like weeds, so um, they probably won't stay tiny forever. Uh, this is my mega phobum uh, robustum. There's the enclosure. Uh, or my Colombian, I think they were called like Colombian giant tarantulas or something like that. These two are mature female Haplopelma van Worthies. Um, sometimes they're. Uh, let's see if I can open this up. Oh, yep. And there she is right there. You can see her, see her legs. She just molted recently, so uh, let's see if this one is. Yeah, she's just right there. Oops. Well, yeah, I scared her too. But usually see them out at night. <laughs> um, this is my other mature. Uh. Female Haplopelma Van Worthy, and she is down there. She kind of what she did. This is, this is an interesting one. She, as you can see, she burrowed. Yeah, I know the glass is not great. She burrowed, made this kind of you know entryway, goes all the way over there, and then down all the way down there and then a few inches uh, back there so she's definitely made the mo one of the most interesting burrows for the species I have this is my other mature female Haplopelma albostriatum um, she's the one uh, if you saw not too long ago there's a mating video I have and this is the one that I made it um, her burrow actually is up on the side of the glass, and that's why I put that's why I put I put uh, towels or something to cover up if they burrow on the side of the glass. You know, since normally the burrow is supposed to be pitch dark, I put something to cover it up when I'm not looking at it. You know, to kind of give it that idea that it's dark. But she burrowed up inside the glass, and uh, she's right back there. You can't really see with the video, but. I, uh, I made it her in February, so hopefully uh, in maybe a month or two she'll drop a sack. I'm pretty sure it was, it was you know, it was a sexual breeding. We just have to wait and see, but, yep, hopefully I'll get an egg sack for that. This is one of my sub-adult Haplopelma uh, hanums. Um, I had three, two were sex male. One matured out male, and I traded them for some spiders. And then these, and then this one hasn't been sexed yet, and I'm hoping it's a female because I would like to mature female. Um, here is the other uh, sub adult I have. Um, let's see if I can. Usually he's kind of by the burrow. We'll, uh, we'll see. Yep. You can kind of, you can see her leg right there. Yep, she's just right there. She's chilling. She's she's unique because she made this kind of 
volcano burrow that uh, you can see where the white is that white right there that's where the pipe is where I put the pipe in and usually you know they make the burrows like these guys they, they, they follow it down here but this one she made it up a couple inches so it's kinda like a volcano it's pretty sweet Oops. this is a mature female haplopelma lividum uh, she molted, I have a molting video of her and uh, she's still uh, hardening up and so that's why she's uh, webbed up this what's supposed to be a pre-made burrow so I'm hoping when she hardens up she will uh, she will burrow in there but she's still hard she's uh she's still um, hardening up so I probably got another week before she she's fully hardened okay uh, this is a horned baboon um, C. Darylingus. You know, oops, <laughs> she's uh, she's been crazy. She's she's uh, I think she's in pre molt doing a lot of webbing. Yeah, I know. I don't mean to freak you out. I know. I know. Uh, you can see the curved horn. Uh, so it's a C. Darylinging. I think it's pronounced. Um, but uh, yeah, I know, I know. I'm sorry. You don't like being, you don't like being videotaped. And there she goes, back down in her hole. Uh, this is my curly hair. You've seen a few burrowing videos of him. He's getting big. He's getting very, very, very big. Um, he's actually kind of done this weird tri burrow thing. Here's one entrance. And then over here is another one. And then there should be a third one. Yep, right there. So he's got like three different entrances in the burrow. And it's kind of like this weird trident shape. It's pretty cool. You know, I know. You don't like, you don't like being fitted tape either. It's because you're a spider. Here's another OBT. He actually molted, and here's uh, here's his legs, and there's his old uh, old ex or his old skin. And here's him. You saw I had a molting video of him, and that's the guy that he has a molting. All right, uh, over here, these are my red trap doors, my African reds. Uh, here is uh, trying to get the light. You can see this guy. I don't know. He made a burrow and stuff like that, and he had a lid, and he took it off. I think he's either doing some maintenance or let's see if I can get a better shot of him. You can see him right there. Uh, either he's doing maintenance or something, but uh, he doesn't have a lid to his burrow. But he's got a burrow going on, and someone. He, this guy over here is uh, also same thing going on. But these guys are trapdoors. Alright. Here is a Haplopelma Lividum, another one. Uh, let's see if I can get the light to work better for me. And you can see him right there. Uh, there he is. He's just He's just chilling. Kind of see his leg. Um, okay. Uh, um, I know there's some few more that are out and about. There's another living them. One's chilling. Um, oh. Here's another one. Chillaxin. Uh, and there's another one. So I have a total of 11 Haplopelma lividums. Most of them are sub-adults. I have one mature female. And uh, so here's uh, six. Uh, and then there's three. And then, uh, oh, no, actually I have 10. No, I'm pretty sure I have 11. Oh, no, no, I have 11. Here's, here's another one. So here's seven, three. 
and one, so that's eleven. <laughs> yeah, you can count. <laughs> All right. Um, then over here, we have uh, ha uh, some younger Haplopelma albostriatums. There, see one's peeking out. Um, and then there's another one with his legs. So you can see his legs sticking out. Just uh, chillaxing. Um, so I have four that are technically unsexed. I believe these are female because I had six. Two matured out as males, and these guys are still, you know, not males. One of them could still uh, mature out, but I'm pretty sure they'll be female. So I have a total of uh, six mature females uh, with one having an egg sac, so that'll be fun. Uh, these are, this is a uh, Haplopelma Schmitty. He, uh, He made an interesting uh, burrow. There he is. You know he was outside, but you can see he. Uh, sometimes you know they'll they'll web up the whole entire upper part. You know it's kind of like their domain besides the burrow. And then uh, a few more. Uh, this is Sh Schmitty. This is a Hanum. Here is a another. Uh, this should be a Schmitty as well. Yeah, this is another uh, Schmitty. See, hello. I know. Yep. There you go. Down you go. All right. This is a Florida trap door uh, spider. You can see she burrowed underground. I don't really show her. Um, she has she hasn't eaten for a while, so I think she's in pre-molt. So I haven't seen it, but I have one video of her feeding. All right, now these guys uh, are. Um, I think it's a Thievian. I think it's pronounced Thievian trapdoor. Uh, these are supposed to be slings. Um, I never, never, never had a sling this small before. But uh, there, sh there he is uh, in his little micro burrow. Um, I've been feeding these guys uh, frightless fruit flies, and I've had them for, I think I've had them for almost a year now. So I think I'm keeping them alive. I'm not sure. I've never really seen them catch their food, but I mean, they've got a big fat abdomen, so. Hopefully I'm doing okay. So there's there's one, and then I have another one right there. And then these are some older OBTs, as you can see. That orange legs are um, unmistakable. Let's see if I can get. There's another one. So these are. OBTs, and this is my Haitian brown, even though he doesn't look brown because he's a sling and slings, and they have their blue when they're slings, and as they get older, they're dull. Uh, their dull colors actually probably, he's probably getting ready to get a new closure. But uh, yeah, he's done, he's done some quite some excavation too. You want to say hi to the camera? Hmm? Want to say hello, everybody? <laughs> Okay. Uh, this is my Malaysian blue femur. Um, he was given to me as a freebie, but um, I really like them. They're uh, uh, the, if you if you if you if you like webbing species, this guy is an insane webber. I mean one of the best webbing slash burrowing species I own um, it's it's ridiculous though that and Ch Chiliobrachis species I find are some of the best webbing species um, now you want now you notice that a lot of these like I said um, I stay away from uh, arboreal species for the most part but I might get some you know get some 
get some uh that was my phone I might get some uh our uh arboreal species later on but um i also kind of tend to stay away from new world species and i have there's no species of spiders that i don't like it's just that i think i react badly to uh or circulating hairs um i've been tagged by my female uh with her hairs twice uh one uh when i was uh when i first got her and i was you know putting in her enclosure and obviously she wasn't happy so she started kicking hairs and the other time was actually when I was messing with her, um, her molt, uh, this is this is her first molt on me. And I used it to sex her, and she's a female. But I didn't realize, um, I, didn't, I wasn't thinking when I was touching it. So I was touching it with my bare hands and stuff, and I didn't completely didn't realize that the hairs would still be on there, even though I should have known that. And on both occasions when I was tagged, I would broke out in hives for three weeks before this, and the swelling didn't go away for three weeks. So I think I might have a bad reaction to um, articulating hairs. Um, it also, get, I mean, I, I also have like seasonal allergies with dust and stuff. So it, it might, it would make sense that I might have um, uh, bad reaction. So most of my new worlds in in my collection are either freebies, except for her, because obviously, you know, if you're if you're a hobbyist, you always want to, you know, I, I rec, you know, why would you not want to get uh, the world's largest uh, species of tarantula? you know, in your collection. So she's actually one of the only ones that I've actually bought myself. All my other nerd worlds, like my Haitian Brown and my Mega Film for Bustin', they're all freebies with me. So um, I'm not sure, cause, so I'm not sure if I have a reaction to bad hair, or to articulating hairs, but I know I react badly to hers. But in, in her defense, you know, this species has, or this genus has some of the most, uh, worse uh, hairs to get on you period so it just could be you know uh, it just could be you know that that's just how bad their her hairs are but you know better safe than sorry so that's why I generally stay away from uh, new worlds and stay with old worlds because trust me breaking out in hives is not fun <clears throat> okay so just finishing this up here are some apple pelma Van Worthies, I think they're, I think I can call them sub-adults now. And then here are some more long ipes. Oops. There's one. Popping out. You want to say hi? No? You shy? Okay. And then these are the rest of my OBTs. Yeah, uh, I have 11 OBTs. Now, I wasn't planning on having 11 OBTs. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, if you if you if you are a buyer of uh, tarantulas and you buy in your bulk, because if you do a lot of online buying, then you know shipping and handling. It's you know easier just to buy in bulk. So a lot of times, <laughs> I just were given uh, free OBTs. <laughs> so I wasn't planning on having that many OBTs. So that's the reason why I have 11. Is a large chunk of them were just freebies that people want to get rid of. Uh, this is my. P. Lugarde, sorry, I'm trying to, yep, right here. This is my P. Lugarde, um, or uh, Fort Hole Baboon, I believe that's the common name. Then uh, this is a younger uh, C. Darling. This is an older one. Uh, she's right there. These guys are great burrows. If you know, for an old world species, if you if you if you're hesitant to jump into the old world bur bur uh, burrowing species, I recommend uh, sea darlings um, or the curved horn baboons. As you know, you know they're the one of the genus of the horn baboons, and this one is the curved one. Um, they are supposedly the people I've talked to who actually live you know live in their environment, you know who've gotten bit from says you know they're not they're they're venom potency because you know when you talk about old world you think. Venom potency is is uh, you know is high with old world species, but they say that they're pretty they're pretty they're pretty it's pretty mild um, you know it's n nothing compared to apple pounds, but everybody reacts differently. So like I you know I, I can't guarantee you that if you ever got bit that it wouldn't be a bad reaction. But um, but these are a great starter for old world species. Um, I don't you know I don't get any threat displays from them. Of course I don't get th any threat displays from a lot of my teas because, like I said, burrowing. If they're burrowing species, you give them enough deep substrate, they'll they'll run more than they'll stand their ground. But definitely these are good starters. And then here's some more 
Heppelpelma, um, Hanums and Schmidties. I've got, I believe, off the, like I said, you'll write in the description with all the numbers of exactly what I have. Uh, this is a Hanum. He's just chilling. You can see he's back there. You can kind of make out his legs, I don't know. And then uh, here's another Van Worthy. Oh, hey. <laughs> nope. There you go. <laughs> and then last, but never least, is another uh, curved baboon. No, oh, where'd, you, where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Yeah, she's back there. But So that's my collection. Uh, I know, it's, it's quite a bit. Um, and I do have a lot of heplopamas, but I love the genus. So there you have it. Those are all my teas. Hope you guys had fun. Alright, see you later.